Welcome back to Networks Tech Talk, a Samsung podcast. I'm your host, Kaylee Pickens, and we've got another great conversation for you today. Millimeter Wave is just one of the key technologies that makes 5G network performance transformative. It's seen as a vital component of 5G networks and promises to deliver data at incredible speeds. But what exactly are millimeter wave bands and why are they important? With me today is Shailish Aswathsi, Director of RF Engineering for the Networks Business at Samsung Electronics America. And he's here to help us understand why millimeter wave is so critical and why operators should consider adding millimeter wave as a part of their 5G deployment plans. Welcome, Shailish. Hey, Kelly. Thanks for having me today. Let's begin with the basics. Can you tell us, what are millimeter wave frequencies? 5G utilizes variety of frequency bands within frequency ranges uh, referred as FR1 and FR2. FR2 corresponds to bands in uh, high frequency range, and we also refer that as millimeter wave frequencies. So it roughly refers to 24 to um, 100 gigahertz of range, and this millimeter wave frequency range can really carry an incredible amount of data. On the other hand, FR1 is divided into mid and low bands, where mid band, for an example, are CBRS, which is uh, Citizens uh, Broadband Radio Services, and C band. Uh, while low band would be below one gigahertz, where signal carries for many miles, but relatively speaking, doesn't carry much data. That sounds great, but can you break it down for our listeners in another way? Here's one way to think about it. With low band, you've got a single lane road. It gets you uh, wherever you need to go, but without much speed, and only allows for one car, let's say, at a time. With mid band, uh, you have a two lane road. It's it's good option to get you from point A to point B fairly quickly and allows for far more drivers at one point of time. With high band, you have got an open highway. It gets you where you need to be as fast as you can go with enough space so you aren't impacted by other drivers. Wow, that sounds impressive. It is. The amount of data that you can deliver with Millimeter wave is staggering. And when it's coupled with advancements in uh, coding technologies, millimeter wave bands can carry thousands of times as much data as a low band signal. Millimeter wave sounds fantastic, especially when you think about how much more data it can carry and how mobile data consumption is on the rise. I'm curious though, how are these high data rates you mentioned actually achieved? Well, uh, millimeter wave operates and can afford to operate thanks to its high frequency bands uh, by using many transmit and receive antennas, both at the base station and in a mobile device, combining the data to increase the throughput. So there are two main things that make the usage of uh, millimeter wave frequency possible. First one is increasing the uh, number of cell sites. The main downside of millimeter wave is that the signal doesn't travel that far. It may be about 1,500 feet without obstruction. So we'll need more sites to ensure coverage. And the second thing that makes millimeter wave usage possible is beamforming. These cell sites will have massive MIMO, massive input, massive output antennas with dozens and even hundreds of elements on each antenna. And each element can project a beam that can be tuned or formed very precisely to increase throughput further. I see. So knowing that, how can operators best leverage millimeter wave? Well, the simple answer is wherever a very high throughput is needed, whether it is indoor or outdoor, millimeter wave is the answer. Indoor sites would get the benefit of multi-gigabit speeds, very low latencies, and immense capacity. We'll see this in places like airport and train stations, uh, even venues and sports arenas, shopping malls, office buildings, smart factories. We'll even see it boosting Wi-Fi connections in subways. I can definitely see the benefits for the indoor sites, but what about outdoors? That's a good question. See, outdoor sites benefit from quick deployment and the capacity increase provided to existing network, especially in urban areas. Uh, We'll also see millimeter wave being used for fixed wireless access, um, also referred as FWA, where it's a great solution. 4G fixed wireless already exists, but 5G fixed wireless access can bring the throughput necessary for it to succeed on a much larger scale. That sounds fantastic. Now, is this something that we're mainly seeing here in the U.S., or is millimeter wave being used across the globe? 
Oh, yes. Many countries around the world are licensing and using millimeter wave bands. Italy, the UK, Finland, Australia, Taiwan, um, Singapore, China, and Japan are a few examples. In the US, one of the major carriers has placed a heavy emphasis on 5G millimeter wave and has average download speed of nearly 700 Mbps, which is two to three times as fast as their competitors. In Korea, uh, Samsung uses 5G millimeter wave as backhaul to get uh, download speeds of more than 1.8 Gbps on a fast-moving subway train. Japan is one of the most advanced users of millimeter wave. All four of their wireless operators have deployed commercial 5G millimeter wave successfully. And they have more than tripled the number of millimeter wave base stations over a six month period into 2021 itself. Millimeter wave sounds incredible, and it seems to be benefiting countries globally. But why should operators deploy millimeter wave in their networks? Well, in the short run, uh, millimeter wave sites can help offload traffic for their LTE and 5G sites in the low and mid band areas. In addition, uh, 5G millimeter wave can support new services like uh, 8K video streaming, self driving cars, AR and VR applications, high speed factory robotics, and transport systems. Sounds beneficial. But what is the cost associated with millimeter wave? That's a very interesting question. Uh, see, when you look at the cost per GB for an operator to send over the network, 5G MM wave is far cheaper than any alternative. Uh, it's over six times less expensive to send via millimeter wave than via 5G on a midband. That's great. Now, let's talk about how Samsung is involved in millimeter wave. Samsung has been an advocate for over a decade with research, standardization, and industry collaboration on millimeter wave technology. In 2012, we demonstrated millimeter wave 5G with 1 Gbps in a fixed wireless environment. In 2019, we had one of the first 5G phone in the 28 and 39 gigahertz millimeter wave bands. In 2020, we achieved the world's fastest 5G download speed, 8.5 Gbps, across multiple devices using millimeter wave single cell. Samsung offers various millimeter wave 5G end-to-end -end solutions, including the Compact Macro, which combines the baseband, radio, and antenna all into a single unit, as well as uh, we have 5G millimeter wave small and indoor cells. Shailish, this is all very exciting. So millimeter wave spectrum not only allows mobile operators to provide services at speeds faster than 4G, but it can support new 5G applications too. I'm excited to see how the industry leverages it as we continue to see 5G roll out globally. Thanks, I enjoyed having this conversation today about millimeter wave. And to our audience, thank you for participating in today's podcast, and we look forward to seeing you next time on Networks Tech Talk.